and I'm your sewing teacher here today to do another pouch with you. This is a lined pouch and it is a mm, kind of a quarter circle pouch. It is really great. It stands up on its own. It can be used for things like coins or earbuds or anything that you actually want to keep in a pouch. You can never have too many pouches. Now this pouch is beautiful because it is super easy. It is a free pattern from the internet. It is from sosimple.de and believe it or not, it's not in English. It is a German pattern. However, I was not able to find this actual pattern in English. So what I've decided to do is I printed it out in German, as you can see here, and it has multiple sizes. It's really great. It has a little square in the corner of the of the printout just to make sure that your printer is printing at the right ratio and you can get started right away all you need is an interior and an exterior fabric so stay with me if this is the kind of content that you like please give us a thumbs up and you can always give us a comment I like to know where you're from let's get making the translation of this is the coffee filter pouch and you'll see that they have all different sizes with the the grade one being the smallest and you can go all the way through to a grade six so that just so that you know you're gonna cut two of the lining and two of the interior fabrics if you're using quilting cotton on this you want to make sure that you are going to use an interfacing like an SF 101 or maybe a fusible fleece, something that's going to give the bag a little more firmness and weight so that it will stand up. So I'm back with my fabric cut out and I've decided to use a um, grade four and a grade five. So I cut both of the grade fives and I taped it together. I have a lining an outer, I have my pattern, and I also have under here, if you can see, this is an interfacing. Now, even though this is an upholstery weight outer, and this one here is a waterproof canvas, I have done a layer of interfacing. Now, if you have fusible interfacing, this would be the time for you to go ahead and to fuse that to either your outer or your inner. That is totally up to you. So take your iron and iron this directly onto the back of your fabric. Now, I had scraps of interfacing and I wanted to use them up. So this is a sew-in interfacing that I'm gonna use today. So instead of sitting with my iron and ironing it on, I'm going to sew it with a basting stitch onto here but most likely you have purchased a fusible so you can use fusible if you don't have any interfacing in the house you can use old denim you can use any kind of stiffer fabric and in the inside of the bag so that people can't see it all you have to do is take whatever you're using as interfacing and you're going to take the wrong side of your so there's your wrong side of your fabric you're gonna take whatever you're using for your interfacing, you're going to lay it on top like so, and then you're going to really close, maybe an eighth of an inch from the edge, you're going to sew with a, a number four stitch, a basting stitch, or a five if your machine goes to a five, and you're gonna sew that on all the way around, just so that it acts as one layer when you're putting the whole thing together. Now, I do know some people that use adhesive, so they would actually give this a spray with adhesive, and then they would put this down. I also know some other people who choose to use whatever they can. So they are going to use, let's say denim. They are also going to use double-sided tape. So they take the double-sided tape. So you see, I've put double-sided tape on there and I'll peel off the back side, and I will lay down whatever I'm using as my interfacing onto there. 
and then I don't need to do a basting stitch. Again, these are just options for whatever it is that you have in your house. You don't have to have the wash away double-sided tape. You can just use a basting stitch. Um, they never, like in the days of when I started to sew, we didn't have um, fusible interfacing. So we used to just baste it in. So, so I have attached the interfacing to the lightest of the fabrics so for this bag it's the interior lining that was lightest it was the, the quilting cotton and for this one it is the um, outer side which is the quilting cotton that is now interfaced now i wanted to tell you that i'm using an eight inch or 20 centimeter zipper for both of these pouches now you'll see that i've taken two pieces of scrap from when i was cutting out and I'm going to use these as tab ends for the zippers. So I do have a video on how to do that. So you can go to the video in the cards. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the link right here. I hope that's where it goes. Maybe it goes over here. Anyway, either here or here, you'll have a pop-up. And I'm going to show you how to lengthen the zipper by using the extra scrap tabs. But hang on and you'll see me do it really quickly. So we're gonna now assemble our bags. So we're all ready to go. First thing we're gonna do is make our tabs. So we're gonna put the good side of the fabric to the good side of the zipper. And we're going to lay that down. We wanna make sure that those zipper ends come together. You might wanna staple that shut I'm going to open the zipper a little bit so I have a little bit of leeway and I'm going to lay this down. Now you can use a binder clip or you can use these wonderful wonder clips or you can use just a pin to pin this in place so that it doesn't move while you are going to sew it down. So you're going to do the one side, then you do the Flip it and do it on exactly the same on this side. So you're gonna go right side of the zipper to the right side of the fabric. You're gonna lay that down. Now you wanna make sure that you don't run over that metal piece with your needle. And you're going to clip it or pin it down just to keep it in place. Don't forget to do a lock stitch. Once you've completed that seam, you can now flip that fabric. You're gonna lay that fabric down as close to the metal end as you can. And you're going to just press it with your fingers down. If you wanna get an iron out, you're welcome to do that but this is just a quick way to do it so that you don't have to get the iron out. Some people also don't have irons, so this is what works well. Now I, I am using currently my foot as my seam guide and I have moved my needle as far to the left as possible so that it is nice and close to the edge. And now I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do a reverse stitch to lock it. And then forward. And then reverse. And now that tab is top stitched down. I can now cut the extra off. I'm going to follow the zipper. Cut the extra off off the sides and I'm going to keep the length here and now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the good side of my outer part of the of the pouch. I'm going to take the good side of my zipper and I'm going to pin or clip 
all the way from the end of my zipper. Let's see, I'm just gonna use a little bit of my tab. So halfway through the tab, I'm gonna lay it down here and I'm going to pin a clip. And I'm gonna follow that curve and that zipper is going to follow the curve as well all the way around the bag. Now, depending on the size of the bag that you're doing is whether or not these tabs are going to show up in your finished project. But it doesn't really matter if they do or they don't. Having them there helps you stabilize that zipper. So now you can see that there is a curve to my zipper. And you can also see that there is some of the of the clips don't hold it steady. So you want to just make sure that you've got that all the way around there. Now I'm going to lock stitch by back stitching and I'm going to go all the way around the edge of that. And I'm going to do that at about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to use the measurement on my machine. And for my machine, a quarter of an inch sits right here, which is at my heart tape. So that's the one that I'm gonna follow for this edge. Now you can take off your universal foot and put a zipper foot on at this point. Um, really the point, what you have to worry about the most is that you want to make sure that you don't go over your zipper. So we're gonna go fit this in. I want it to be at a quarter of an inch, so I'm gonna check that that's at the right spot. My seam allowance is a quarter of an inch, yes. And then I'm going to keep my foot right up against that zipper. Okay, so you'll see that I had the zipper open a portion of the way, and this is important to note because now I've come to the point where I can't pass that zipper pull. So I'm going to put my needle down. I'm going to lift my foot. I'm going to pull my zipper closed. Then I'm going to lay my zipper flat again, put my foot down, and I'm gonna to continue to stitch all the way at an So now we have attached the outer part of our bag. So what we need to do next is we need to attach the lining of the bag. So we're going to take our lining of the bag. We're going to do exactly what we just did. So make sure you have the good side. This is my bad side. That's the waterproof side. And I am going to sew this onto the same place on that zipper that I just sewed the other side. Now, some people who are advanced sewists could sew this both at the same time. But for my students, I want them to slow down and I want them to try to do this step by step. So I'm gonna open that zipper again. I'm going to lay my good side of my fabric on top of my good side of my, so in the exact same spot as the other one. And again, I'm gonna clip it because clipping's easy. If you have pins, use pins. If you have binder clips, use binder clips. And I'm gonna go all the way around like I just did a minute ago. Now we're going to be doing this part blind. We can no longer see our zipper. So now we have to do it using our fingers and make sure that we know where our zipper is at all time. But because we used a quarter of an inch seam allowance with the last one, now we're gonna use an eighth of an inch. So we're gonna go really close to the edge. So I'm going to use a zigzag stitch. So I'm gonna change my machine to a zigzag stitch. I'm going to adjust the, the length of the zigzag 
to a two. And I'm going to go on the fabric, off the fabric, on the fabric, off the fabric, on the fabric, off the fabric, all the way down, the, down to the end. So again, you want to make sure that you have the zipper pushed up right against the foot so you know where the foot is all the time. And you want to zigzag on, off. So now if you flip it to the other side, you can see where your zigzag stitch is and where the seam for your first seam allowance is. So now I'm going to open this up and I'm going to take a look at the good side of my pouch and I'm going to give it a good finger press so that those two layers are laying nice and flat. So I want to pull them so they're flat. I'm going to finger press or I'm going to get out my iron and I'm going to press here. Now, if you're using an iron and you're using a nylon zipper, make sure you keep that hot iron away from that nylon. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a melted zipper. Now, you can see how nice it is once you've pulled it away and done some finger pressing. You can see how nice that is going to look when you have your pouch done. I want to keep it looking that nice. So I'm going to do a top stitch right at about an eighth of an inch all the way along here. So I'm going to make sure by putting this into my machine that I'm using the opposite side of my foot up against that zipper. And I'm going to make sure the whole time that my lining and my outer fabric is super flat. I'm going to put the straight stitch on and I'm going to put my, my needle back in the middle and this is where I'm going to do my top stitch. Okay, so now I have a very professional edge here where it's top stitched down and so that way if I ever throw this in the washing machine which I totally can now um, it will always lay flat because it has that beautiful top stitch so now I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side so now to do the top stitch on the opposite side I would open up the bag and make sure that you can lay it flat again finger pressing it and pulling both the lining and the top layer so that they are very, very flat where they meet the zipper. So next we want to sew our edges together. So the first thing we're going to do is match up our lining. So you can put your finger on that zipper. Let's see, I'm going to close that zipper to start, I think. Okay. So I'm going to match up my fabric here. And I'm going to start at this edge and I'm going to go all the way down to here and reverse stitch, reverse stitch, all the way down to here to reverse stitch. And then I'll show you what to do at the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the inner part of the bag. So I'm going to open my zipper part of the way. I'm going to lay my fabrics flat with each other. And I want to make sure that I keep my zipper and my tab out of the way. So I'm going to flip those down 
and I'm going to sew all the way from the edge of this seam all the way to the end and reverse stitch at both ends and I'm going to do it here at this end and then I'm going to show you what to do here at the end and then we'll move on and we're going to do the side of the lining the side of the lining and we're going to leave this part of the interior bag open so here we go Okay, when we get to the bottom of the bag, we're gonna open up this part here and we're going to lay seam number one and seam number two on top of each other. So we're gonna take a good look and we wanna lay those seams right on top of each other, just like that. And then we're gonna take a clip or a pin, we're gonna clip that side and we're gonna clip this side, and then we're gonna lay that down and we're gonna sew all the way across here. So now the outer part of our bag is finished. We're gonna just clip some of these threads. Now I'm going to do my interior now. And as I mentioned before, I had opened up the bag to about halfway with the zipper. That's very important because if you don't do that, you're going to end up not being able to turn the bag because we've already closed one side. So now we're going to sew the other side of our bag. So we're gonna pull this one and this one. And we want to make sure that our zippers are even and that we are going to catch both sides of our lining. So I'm gonna lay everything nicely. I'm gonna put a pin or a clip on it and then I'm gonna do the same on this side also. I wanna make sure that everything is going to meet. So I want to make sure that that zipper is exactly where I want it. To be. Now I'm going to turn the bag and just take a look and make sure that I've sewn everywhere and there's no holes in the bag. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm gonna just clip the end of that tab and clip the end of that tab. And let's make sure that this is right. So here we go. Now you have to manipulate this quite a bit to get it through, especially if you've used a canvas or a waterproof canvas or a thick, I'm gonna pull out the interior lining again, and I'm going to do what I did before, only this time I'm going to tuck. So before I just took a seam and a seam and I matched them and then I sewed across. But because that leaves a raw edge, we don't want to leave a raw edge. And normally you would change your thread so that it would match and then when somebody looks in the pouch they wouldn't even know that that's where you turned your bag so i'm going to just use my fingers and tuck in about a quarter of an inch i'm going to meet up those two seams and then i'm going to sew right across here i'm going to use white so that you can see 
so there you go there's what it looks like inside the bag I'm going to flip it in I want to make sure that my corners for the outside are nice and square so I'm going to use my fingers to push that corner right out and there's the inside of the bag just has that nice seam and like I said before you want to make sure that you're using a matching thread so that if you were going to sell this or give this away as a gift, no one would ever know that that's where the hole in your bag is. And then you wanna make sure that you've got no threads hanging out whatsoever. Give that a zip up. And there is your beautiful sitting pouch. And there you go. Can't beat that. And there is your beautiful sitting pouch. So now I'm gonna sew my second one and I'll show that to you at the end when I'm signing off. Well friends, that's a wrap. Thanks for joining me today to learn about the coffee filter pouch. This is a stand-up pouch, stands up on its own. As you can see here, there you go. These stand up on their own. They're really handy for anything small that you might want to be able to reach in and grab. These are a pretty easy make, something a beginner can do step by step. So, so along. If this is the kind of content that you're looking for, please give this a thumbs up and comment on ideas that you have for other videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please click the subscribe button below and the notification bell will let you know when I upload new videos on Sundays. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your sewing journey. Sometimes it's my students, sometimes it's my children, sometimes it's my sewing journey, but it's always yours. Thanks so very much. We'll see you next week.